Hey guys, it's Denise here, Nola Collectibles, and welcome to my channel. I'm here today to do a thrift store haul. So you know me, I love going to my local thrift stores and picking up really fabulous jewelry items that I throw onto eBay for resale. I'm a reseller, a part-time reseller. My shop name on eBay is also Nola Collectibles, and my channel is all about jewelry. So if you're into jewelry too, I do thread up unboxings, Goodwill Blue Box unboxings, um, all that good stuff, fun re content related to jewelry, then this is the jam for you. Um, so I'm going to get right into it. So you don't want to waste anyone's time today. I hope you all are having a fabulous day. Um, the first piece that I did want to showcase here I thought was like a real showstopper. I just think this is such a gorgeous piece of jewelry. And it has these beautiful rhod rhodonite... Go Rhodonite, rhodonite, rhodolite, rhodolite, rhodolite garnets here, faceted beads, and the rhodolite garnets, you know, because they've got that kind of purpley color, more on the purple side than they are in the red side, and it had beautiful twisted strands here of that, and then it has this absolutely stunning marcasite center here, this centerpiece, um, I just think this is absolutely gorgeous, I mean, what a regal piece, it gives me kind of definitely... Uh, bohemian garnet vibes i mean i don't this is not an older piece but it de definitely kind of gives me that that aesthetic to it so this guy i just think it's absolutely lovely so beautifully made has a nice lobster claw clasp on it and i paid half price for this so this was supposed to be 15 dollars, and so i paid half price of that for that for this particular necklace and so that's just gorgeous i wanted to start with a really pretty piece just you know me i like i like a showstopper i like to open things up in a big way and so i also got i got this guy here the tag head fell off of it i think this was half price as well so two dollars and this is a weiss what kind of looks like a clover rhinestone brooch here and it has um, really interesting kind of components there you can see it almost looks like peking glass which is like that faux jade man-made stone uh, you know it's glass obviously and I love that it's a four-leaf clover type of design I feel like I had never seen that before I like the sea pearl kind of components of it this is what the back looks like the white signature is like r right on the bottom and a little kind of plaque right there. And so I thought for St. Patrick's Day coming up that this was a great piece of jewelry and overall just a nice looking piece of jewelry, different, nice Weiss, good quality brooch. So I picked up that guy. Where should I go from there? I'll stick with another brooch. Let's do another brooch. This one, uh, I definitely paid half price for $5.99, so it was $3. And this one, I, I actually recognize this in the case, and this is a Kenneth J. Lane for Avon. So this one, not a huge, like, you know, there's certain pieces uh, that Kenneth J. Lane designed for Avon that sell for massive amounts of money, large, you know, big, very collectible, very over the top in its design. Um, I had a necklace with black faceted, Glass crystal beads, multi strand, and panther in, interlinking panther heads that I had gotten at an antique mall not too long ago. Also, Kenneth J. Lane for Avon piece. That one does sell for a couple of hundred bucks. Um, something like this, you know, sells for less, but the Kenneth J. Lane for Avon capsule collection. People who love Avon collect it. People who love Kenneth J. Lane collect it. And so it's got that appeal. And I thought this was just a really cute kind of crown, gold tone crown brooch. Kenneth J. Lee for Avon. So I picked up that guy for sure. Then I saw this. Um, this one was actually on the rack. Um, you know, I tell you guys with my thrift store, first I shopped the rack what's out and open and available to the public. And then I shopped the counters that are closer to the cash wrap area. And so this was actually um, hanging from one of the <clears throat> pegboard hooks. And I thought this was just absolutely beautiful. Obviously a vintage bracelet. I love the panels. I love the cabochons, the big oversized cabochon rhinestones here and the red, the green, and the blue. And then it's got just very pretty smaller rhinestone detail there in similar coloration. And so this guy was marked $3.99. And it was absolutely perfect. It's not missing any rhinestones, which is very unusual, you know, when you find these pieces. They're sometimes always missing a rhinestone. And it has a really pretty fold-over clasp. And this guy was a little bit on the longer side of things, which, again, is also nice because, um, you know, people are often looking. I'm going to say maybe this is like a 7.5-inch bracelet, possibly even longer. Of course, I tried it on. 
because it's so pretty. It just gives me, it looks very like royal. It's giving me like royal vibes. It's very regal, I thought. Just elaborate, beautiful piece of jewelry. And so um, this one's actually unmarked. It doesn't have any maker's mark on it, but I think it's a good, I, th I just think it's a real goodie. Just really nice. And like I said, nice that it isn't missing any kind of rhinestones. So for $3.99, absolutely, I picked that one up. And then here I wanted to go, I picked up a couple um, items of men's jewelry. And these guys were $3.99. And these are, these are Cremans. Yeah, Cremans, uh, very known for their gold-plated, gold-filled cufflinks. Menswear designer that made lots of men's accessories. And these I just thought were really, really cute. These are just gold filled and they have the little fly fishing lure in there. Very mid-century to me. There was a very well-known mid-century designer that made these fly fishing cufflinks. I forget his name, but um, they're very collectible. And so I think I thought, okay, here we have like Father's Day right around the corner. I am like losing track of time. I don't know about you guys. I don't know what month it is. I think it's March. <laughs> But every month is here like faster than you know it. So I don't know. My Father's Day, it's like tomorrow. But I thought those were great vintage uh, cufflink items. And I think these are great for, you know, if you happen to have a mid-century modern type of guy. I don't know. He likes, um, that's his aesthetic. Um, picks up some of those elements. Has an appreciation for that style. Maybe enjoys a, a nice cocktail every once in a while. That that's a great gift for him. And then, so they also had, and this is actually not Cremant's. This one is Hickok. I saw this and it, and it has, was kind of the same type of deal here with a little fly fishing lure in there. And these guys, they actually, they definitely look like they're handmade components in there. I think they're so cool. And they're just like in this little like resin suspended in there. And they're just like so neat. So this is a tie bar and it's not an exact match for the other one. Um, the other ones have the blue and the red. This one is just in the red. But uh, I think, like I said, I just think they're unusual, not something I, I tend to see too, too much, and just great gift items for a guy in your life. So those are fantastic and cool. So I picked those guys up. Um, another little brooch here. This is a fun brooch. I saw this and I just, just about died because it's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a little um, Hollycraft brooch. The sticker is like in the worst place. Uh, let me see. I think this one, this dude, I think um, might have been a half price. I'm not sure, but it's like a little street lamp. And how cute is that? And how perfect is that for New Orleans? Uh, I think, you know, it might have been like a Christmas piece because it's got the red and the green crystal rhinestones in there. But I just thought this was like so adorable. And I liked like a little faux fire. Again, I think with, you know, with Hollycraft, certain pieces are worth quite a bit of money. Some of the big elaborate pieces, multi rhinestone pieces, Hollycraft, um, the 1950s Hollycraft rhinestone pieces. But this guy, I just like, I don't know. I couldn't resist. I just think it's so charming. So I definitely picked that guy up. Maybe I should, let's go. A lot of vintage we've got going on here. Maybe I'll go a little modern. I saw this guy on the rack and this guy was half price. And this is just a Chico's Lariat necklace with rhinestone detail. Really, really pretty here. I think a little bit different than what we tend to see coming out of Chico's. We see like a lot of boho styles, right? I'm not lying to you. Yes, it's Chico's. I was like, is this Ann Taylor? It's not Ann Taylor, but kind of looks like Ann Taylor. Uh, really pretty pave crystal rhinestone detailing on this. I just think this is a great looking necklace. Nice and long, adjustable if you want to wear it longer or shorter. So this guy was $2 and is in just excellent like new condition. So Chico's, you know, pieces, till, uh, they still sell, sell for me pretty well. People are always looking for Chico's jewelry. There's definitely an active audience for it. So for that price, I picked that guy up. And I just, like I said, I just think this is a great little piece of jewelry. Very, very nice. Another modern piece of jewelry is this Stella and Dot necklace, brushed gold tone necklace with a big kind of swirling centerpiece. And then we have all these kind of like boho, almost looking hand hammered, dangling, dangling components here. I, I think this is very, very chic looking. And you can see right there, it says Stella and Dot. And so I had recently said that uh, Stella and Dot had went out of business. A lovely viewer told me they did not go out of business. 
sometimes I confuse my Stella and Dots, my Chloe and Isabelle's and some of those other brands. <laughs> so they are still in business. You can go on their website, uh, but Stella and Dot definitely sells for me, it continues to sell. So when I see some of those pieces that are of nicer quality that look superior that or they're very chic, then I go and I pick them up. And so this guy for $3.99, or if it was half price, I added that to the items that I purchased. Put that guy right there. What else? I thought this was a really interesting piece of jewelry. I, I don't tend to go for these like kind of like bohemian necklaces because I feel like a lot of these are very much like a dime a dozen the ones that come out of India with the brass components and stuff like that I'm sure you guys when you do your unboxings or you get purchased jewelry lots you get a ton of them I get a ton of them also you know the brass bracelets with the inlay details tend to get a, a ton of those too so there's just a lot of this jewelry that comes out of India you know and it doesn't it doesn't sell that well because there's so much of it. But I thought that this was very different. And the reason why I picked this one up was because of this big boy component right here. And it's Egyptian Revival. And people are actively looking for Egyptian Revival jewelry on eBay, on the secondary market. It's a hot seller. Whenever I get something that's Egyptian Revival, I try to list it as soon as I get it and it will sell just as quickly as I list it. So, you know, the scarab jewelry, the pharaoh jewelry, the king tut, all of that good stuff that was, you know, inspired by when they opened Tut's tomb in the 1920s, you know, created this moment in architecture and interior design and clothing and jewelry. Everybody got excited about it. So, like I said, people continue to kind of look for that. So I thought this was great. It has some natural stone components here. There's a little bit of like amethyst or it looks like maybe some carnelian or that could be glass. You know, then we have these ceramic beads, some porcelain beads. There's even some what look like Italian glass beads here. So this could be very well be an artisan made piece. It probably is. And we have some of these kind of cool cutout beads right here. I just thought nice statement, different, great looking kind of component right there. And so I picked that guy up for $4.99. Put that one over there. And I picked these up. I always tell you like in New Orleans that people are very obsessed with food. <laughs> and it carries over into the jewelry. I buy so much like shrimp jewelry, fish jewelry, uh, oyster jewelry, all of that stuff. So this right here, I actually did recognize um, this jewelry guy and his name is Maurice Malure and he is local. He has a, he had a studio here in New Orleans and in one other location, I forget where, but he crafts fine pewter jewelry and fine pewter home items. Very well known. And his signature, it's a, let me see if I can find it. It probably will be very hard to see. But, uh, yeah, because it, it is definitely hard to see. It's um, it's kind of like right there. You can see Malur right by the tail. And uh, it looks like a scrawled signature. So it makes it even more difficult to sometimes see. But if you find these, you know, go on his website. I think he still sells stuff. Uh, the, the style to me is very recognizable. So when I see, like I said, oysters or shrimp or something like this, I know it's Maurice Malour. So again, I think these are really whimsical and I think there might be a good, uh, maybe I'll throw these up on like a Facebook marketplace or something, or I'll probably just end up putting it on eBay. I don't know. We'll see, but definitely a specific market for these. New Orleans might be the market where if you love shrimp so much, you want to put them on your ears, then this is for you as well. <laughs> I think they're just really cute. And I, I like Maurice Bullard jewelry. It's really nicely crafted. What else? Let's see. I got this necklace right here. You guys might recognize this or you may not. This one definitely was half price. It was $4. And so I recognize this right, right away. And this is the Jane Seymour Open Hearts collection. And you can see here, it looks like an upside down heart. It almost looks like an S for Jane Seymour. And this is a collection that's currently sold at Zales. And so fine jewelry with this open kind of looking heart design, very well known. You'll find it in like diamonds or you find it in silver, you'll find it in gold. 
all of the above. And so, yeah, again, something that people are actively looking for. They don't want to go to sales. They don't want to pay full price, but they still want to give a lovely gift to someone. So they'll go on eBay and look at, look for it. So this one, actually, this is sterling silver, and it's marked right there on the back. And so, yeah, I got that one, too. And, you know, certain things, like I said, if they're name brand, you know, we know that people are looking for them on the secondary market, just like you or I don't want to pay for certain things full price. Other folks don't either. So they go on eBay and they look for it. I know I do. I've been doing it all my life. Um, going real quick here, just to this ring. This is a red Jasper ring. This guy was definitely half price. It was $14.99. So I think I paid seven for that. And I like this because it's just like a really substantial looking ring. It's about a size six. And like really nice, heavy looking, a lot of silver right there. Nice twisted open design there. The back of it's actually very pretty too. I see it has this like open back. And I just thought nice piece of quality jewelry right there. Red Jasper, big cabochon. Very, very nice. So I picked up that guy. Um, real quick about my jewelry, because I know some folks, they ask sometimes. And I don't know, I'm having like a you know a little bit of a lavender moment. I went with my NARS lavender nail polish. And then um, I've got this big rose quartz cabochon ring and in sterling silver. This is a really nice one. Let's see. Let's see what size this is. It has a really nice band. It's like on the thicker side. Rose quartz, you know, the love stone, often associated with attracting love. So we're just six and a quarter on that guy. Looks like that. This one is available in my eBay store. And then I just have my faux opal vintage hinged bracelet here. It's got a little safety clasp. I just love this bracelet. I think it's so pretty. I love the faux pink opals and then the combination with the turquoise and the purple rhinestones. I just think it's so feminine. And then I here I have it with my coil vintage wrap bracelet with the faux pearl and this one has it has tassels on it which you guys have seen a million times. I love that bracelet. I wear it all the time. Anyway, so just to keep going, another little item here that I picked up is I saw this little sterling silver bracelet here, and it had some really pretty elongated baguette rhinestones in the middle. And so this is just with sterling silver. You can see those there. Really nice cut on those, just, you know, different, kind of like beyond what you typically see with round cubic zirconias, and it's got a really cute lobster claw clasp there and this one was marked $3.99 so definitely just a really nice quality on that and a great price and so I picked that guy up for that reason I'll put that one right there I also picked up I saw this I think this one was on the shelf as well this is a gold tone really pretty Italian style cross and you see here it has the millefiore glass so just the flowers there in the glass design and I just thought this was just absolutely adorable and I love the Italian made glass jewelry pieces and it's an excellent condition nice and weighty nicely made I like the bezel on there it's kind of got a rope bezel around the glass cabochons very very pretty and this one definitely was half price so this was four dollars I picked up that one We'll put this maybe over here. What else? Uh, I'll go to another ring maybe. I saw this ring and this one was just like a really great looking sterling silver with several different kind of natural stones surround and an onyx center on that. And this just looked very heavy, nice thick band. And I think this was marked Thailand. Yes, 925 Thailand. And so that guy just needs a really good cleaning, which I will do. And let's see what size this is. This is about an eight and a half. And that guy just looks like this. These mandrels, about eight and a quarter, eight and a half. These mandrels are like, they, these guys like double as weapons. They are so serious. <laughs> 
<laughs> I was thinking, like, who needs, like, a weapon when you have a, a giant stainless steel mandrel? <laughs> so we have this ring here. I believe this one was half price, too, so $4 on that ring. I don't think I would have paid $8 for it. Uh, let's see what else. I have this beautiful pair of earrings that I picked up. These guys were marked $4.99, and these just gave me kind of like a John Hardy type vibes, like David Yerman, and these, I believe, were $9.25, also marked Thailand. And they're just really nicely, extremely nicely made pair of kind of elongated hoop earrings for pierced ears. These are just, like I said, they look so beautiful. They look like such nice quality, really, really nicely made, good quality sterling silver earrings with a beautiful design element to them. So I picked up those, you guys. So I said that they have a counter and then they also have like a shelf stuff that's hanging on the shelves. The shelves, I have found such amazing goodies on the shelf. Uh, they sort of huge sterling silver pieces, big chunky made in Italy, like 70 grams sterling silver, fancy like chains. I have found, I found David Yerman over there, you know, like authentic David Yerman. So I never pass up the, that section of the store. And I think a lot of people do because they assume what's there is all costume. And so when I was over there, I wanted to save this towards the end. I saw this hanging there from one of the hooks. And uh, you might know what this is. You might recognize it. Uh, I recognized it immediately. This is a Tiffany's necklace. And so this is Elsa Pretty for Tiffany's. Elsa Pretty, they made these, these this cross design, very specific. And it has the Elsa Pretty signature on the tag. And it has, this particular one is manufactured in Spain and it's marked 925. Uh, all of the links are properly soldered. All of the elongated tags looked good to me. I compared it against some of my other Tiffany's that I that I know is authentic because I bought it. <laughs> and everything looked legitimate to me. So this just needs a really, really good cleaning. And this guy was $5.99. So for $5.99 on the rack at my thrift store, I found an authentic Tiffany's Elsa Peretti cross necklace. So I'll just clean this guy up. And obviously this really, really excited me spotted it and I'm like a hunter who sees movement in the wild only my movement is Tiffany's <laughs> so I saw it and I snatched it up and I, you know, I mean I of course like I examined it closely because I don't want to buy fake Tiffany's because you don't want to end up with fake Tiffany's because you can't sell fake Tiffany's you don't want to sell attempt to sell fake Tiffany's you just don't even want to go there so that was awesome and super super exciting uh, two, a few more items here. Uh, this guy you saw in my last uh, Goodwill unboxing. I had purchased a $49.99 mystery box. I was very disappointed with it. Goodwill sent me a replacement box. In there was this brand. So this brand, similarly, you see here was marked $4.99. This is, this is, I just had a blank. This is J. King Mine Finds. J. King Mine Finds. J. King was a host on the Home Shopping Network. He specifically did a lot of the jewelry television selling segments. He went off on his own once he made the connects with some of the manufacturers. He went off on his own and created his own line, Desert Rose Trading by J. King. So uh, very nice, high quality items that he sourced and utilized in all of his jewelry production lots of natural stones, lot all sterling silver componentry. So this one was worth, marked for $4.99, and this is a J. King Mine Finds turquoise, turquoise chip ne necklace. So really nice color on the turquoise. They've got a really good kind of blue-green coloration to them. You can see they're very nice natural stones. Very nice. You know, uh, one thing to look for when you're trying to identify authentic turquoise is the variation in the stones. It shouldn't be even colored. The veining shouldn't look like even. It, it's natural. It comes from the earth. It should have inconsistency to its look. Inconsistency in the veining, inconsistency in the color. And if you're still unsure, you could always take um, a little Q-tip with acetone and, and wipe it, dab it in a very inconspicuous spot and see if any color transfer comes off. If you see color on the Q-tip, then you know this is likely dyed howlite or some other stone that they use and they dye to, to make it look like turquoise. So really, really nice strand of J. King Mine Finds Desert Road, Rose Trading turquoise. And then where there's one, where there's smoke, you know, there's fire. So there was a second one. Uh, this one I just love so much. Also Mark $4.99. And this one, also Desert Rose Trading, also what's very typical of what you see with this brand, he will put 
end caps on the jewelry that looks like this. And uh, right there, it will say DYT for Desert Rose, DRT for Desert Rose Trading. You can kind of see it right there. And these end caps are very stylistic of, of the jewelry that he makes. This type of chain also very stylistic of what he makes. And so this is a yellow jasper, almost kind of looks like um, a hishi style. You know, the Native American style with the with the discs. You know, sometimes they make them turqu turquoise, sometimes they make a hishi shell. Santo Domingo is a, fa a famous area where they um, manufactured that type of jewelry. And this is gorgeous. I love yellow jasper. I think he makes a lot of yellow jasper pieces and they're really, really fabulous. And it's hard to find yellow jasper in other pieces of jewelry, but he has used it quite a bit. So I love that piece. I think it's gorgeous. And then finally, well, I like, there's two things. One more thing, I got this big kind of 80s fun statement -y Monet necklace and this guy just kind of 70s, kind of 80s, sleek and sexy and slinky. You know me, I always throw out a Grace Jones reference. Can't you see this on Grace Jones? I see, I see this on someone going into Studio 54. It's fabulous, I love it. Or it made me, I also like a good Dynasty reference, made me on Alexis Carrington. Uh, she might like this, it's a power piece. But I thought it was cool because it has this like it unsnaps. It's got this like snapping component here and it snaps together. So I thought that was very interesting. And yeah, this one, $6. That one was definitely half price. I paid $3, I believe, for that. And then finally, final, I got this pair of new inbox. And this actually was in the in the glass case. Uh, a new inbox pair of Betsy Johnson earrings. And I just thought these were so cute. They're little um, Day of the Dead cat earrings. And they look like little Day of the Dead masks. How cute. And I think these were $3. So adorable. I mean... I, you know, some Betsy Johnson sells, some of it doesn't. There's also a lot of fake Betsy Johnson that comes out of China. So, but I think, you know, if you recognize the quality of what her pieces look like, you can definitely tell the China versus the authentic Betsy Johnson because China stuff feels very lightweight. So that's everything, you guys. This was my massive, pretty massive haul of all of the items I recently thrifted from my local thrift store. And I hope you enjoyed this little like show and tell. I think it was really fun. Some really different items in this lot of jewelry here. I never know what I'm going to find. And so, yeah, let me know what you think. If you have a favorite piece, if you have any thoughts about anything else here that I got wrong or otherwise. But yeah, leave me a like on the way out. Let me know what you think. Give me a subscribe if you haven't already. I appreciate you being here. I will see you on the next one, guys. Have a great weekend.